What, you know, and even in our community, you mentioned something earlier about somebody that you knew that um, they couldn't go home. They had a brother. They found out um, a young man that had yes. a brother. Um, okay, so let me answer the first question. The first question you said was, um, "How do I? How did I feel about?" Um, did you get bullied? As it, a, you know, were our you, community bullied. Yeah, okay. I feel like the LGBT community is definitely. A target for bullying. Um, from my own experience, I just I realized that people just don't like the idea of something different, and instead of you know a lot of the times instead of embracing it, some people embrace it, but the people that don't embrace it will attack it. And um, unfortunately, through my elementary years of high uh, elementary years of school and high school years of school, I was targeted and, and bullied. But um, fortunately, I didn't let it bother me too much. But for some people, it, it gets very rough and to the point where they commit suicide. And that's to me, is unacceptable. And I, I hope that nobody ever has to go through that and get to that point. But unfortunately, sometimes it does happen. And that is how you know that people are bullied. I mean, I mean they're a target because because of who they are because of how because they're different and and people have a hard time accepting people that are different oh yes yeah and instead of instead of embracing them they they ta they attack them mm. and uh, what was the next question well, 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 <laughs> the, well the one of the questions that um, I, I'll get back to that but I, I, I was just looking at something that I thought was really interesting um, was that Congress is clueless on gay blood ban. In fact, we were talking earlier, and you were even surprised that it was still there. And it said, even as members of their community were still bleeding from the Savage shooting in Orlando, many gay men were turned away from donating blood to assist in the medical uh, response. And what, what is wrong with gay blood? And there were two senators. It was just fun, interesting. Both Democratic Senator Gen uh, Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, and and Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, they didn't even know about this. He said, "I didn't." One said, "I don't know anything about that. I never heard of that," and the other senator said, "I didn't know there was a ban." Was a ban, and I, you know, they're both trying to urge them to reconsider it. Uh, the FDA put a lifetime ban on gay men donating blood during the rise of the HIV epidemic in 1980s. And despite scientific developments in blood screening, screening and technology, the FDA continues to ban many gay men, including those in monogamous relationships, from donating blood. And um, which was really shocking because look at all the people in the streets that were bleeding, you know, from the nightclub. They were they were in the nightclub bleeding. They took them out, and they all there was such a. If you remember, there was everybody was rushing to give blood. You could see that on on television, and 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 uh, nobody realized even the two senators, one Republican, one Democrat, neither of them even realized the ban was still there. I think part of the reason why is because my per, my personal opinion on all it is such an outdated law. I mean, this is this was a law that was implemented at a time when when you know there was an AIDS epidemic. Right. That is no longer an issue anymore, and it is a completely outdated law. And to me, it, it's it's almost devastating to even know that this law still ceases to exist when there are so many people that are voluntarily willing to donate blood including myself I would you know I would have donated blood had I been allowed to do it openly as a gay man and unfortunately I don't have that opportunity because this law is still in place and it's very unfortunate especially when we had so many people coming together and would have undoubtedly given their their blood and donated it to people who needed it to the to the victims of the massacre 
you know, uh, there was a California, California Democratic Republic uh, representative. She's from um, California. She's a Democrat. And her name's Barbara Lee said, this is an emergency. An executive order should be issued. An, administration, an administrative change should be taking place right away. And the White House pushed back Tuesday, that Tuesday, and calls from the administration to do just that, telling reporters at a daily press briefing that they have no plans on making any of these changes now. And, it, uh, and, and uh, wasn't that a slap in the face of the community that was already deep in mourning for something like that to happen? Such a disappointment. I, I mean, to get everyone's hopes up into thinking that they were actually going to get some progress made on something that should have been probably taken care of many years ago, mm -hmm. and then to all say, oh, never mind. I mean, that's just, that's just, that's disrespectful. And, and you don't know, I mean, we're talking about people giving blood, and there's straight men that uh, want to give blood. I mean, we don't know who they've been sleeping with. And sure. so, I mean, blood is blood. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, of course, you have to look and see, make sure the person isn't ill or something like that. You know, you want to do a quick test to make sure the blood is good, you know, because it could be anybody could have, uh, you know, um, you know, problems, you know, maybe diabetics, they can't give blood, or certain people in certain communities, people with autoimmune, there may be a, a, a reason. But if people who are willing to give blood, I think there's a quick test that they could take to make sure the blood is okay, and that is, that's, that's really a, a, a terrible, you know, it's, it's really, it's really pretty bad, you know, to, I, 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 I I was shocked, you were shocked, and our, and, and our senators were shocked that this was still on. And uh, as one of the, you know, the, the writer um, that spoke on this before, Milo, um, My, Milo Todd, you know, um, you know there, he said there, there's many ways you can show up for the gay community after Orlando, and it, would, it took a tragedy, a tragedy to that all of a sudden everything now is coming out. I mean, we didn't even know about the, uh, with, with all these things, the blood problem. I mean, look, I mean, I hate to say it, but you know, a tragedy brought out a lot of things for the gay community, and they could probably change a lot of things. Absolutely. Um, in response to what your statement that you opened when you read, um, you know, there are hate crimes. There are, you know, there's homophobia that happens on a daily basis. Um, but of course, like you said, it takes a tragedy such as a nightclub massacre to spread such awareness and for people to actually say, hey, maybe we need to change things a bit. Maybe we need to do something about this. And um, this is like a, a, an incident where it really opened people's eyes a bit more. Unfortunately, in order to do that, there had to be a massacre, which to me is, is very unfortunate that we couldn't have resolved these issues without there being such a tragedy. Why does it take a tragedy in order to make progress in certain areas of things that could have been resolved before such a matter occurred? What do you recommend for the straight community? How to, um, is there any way that the, um, the gay community uh, could uh, embrace the straight community and, and have some conversations and how we could help, you know, everybody wants to help, but they don't know how to help, they don't know what to do. Is there any way that you feel that the straight community could help the gay community? Absolutely, there's definitely a way they can help. After all, I mean, we're the minority, they're the majority. I would say, I would like to see more inclusiveness, include straight people in more events, more things, and kind of give them a sense of what we go through so that they understand what it's like to be in our shoes so that they can try to make, make it a better place for us. Because I feel like there's a big lack of understanding, and if they had a better understanding of how things were for us and, and why we're trying to fight for certain things, they would understand and they would join us and fight for us as well. And I think, you know, that's a lot, you know, that's why we try to include people in Pride. You know, I, I love seeing allies show up to Pride and be there and, you know, some of them come just to party. But a lot of them are there to really show their support 
and really try to make a difference and fight for us. And I think the more we try to include them and, and try to educate them and try to give them a better understanding of what it's like to be a minority and, and, and you know, be a part of the LGBT community, the more they'll be willing to get involved and, and join us in fighting for equality. Yeah, because uh, I guess people don't know what to do. They don't know, you know, they're afraid they're going to step on one's toes, and they don't know how to be included. Um, so that's, I think that's why we're doing the show today, to help people, um, you know, to help the community that we can join you in some way to help you out. Um, and I think maybe that, that is the reason I do, I am having the show today. So you could, you know, you could, really get to the heart of it because I don't think that people really know what to do. I mean, after this tragedy, I think the community, we all stood with you. Did you know that? I yes. mean, it was, yes. a, it was a, you know, it was really something. And, um, and I think people are afraid of what they don't know, what they don't understand. I think this is really the problem. Anything that's different is, is scary. I mean, uh, even with you know, um, even with knowing people that are, are you know, Muslim community, you know, people because we've had terrorist attacks, you know, and you know by by a lot of Mus you know Muslims aren't terrorists, but all the terrorists have had most of them, not all of them, have been Muslim. So people are afraid, and they don't know what what to do and what not to do, and they don't know the procedure, the proper correctness, or not the proper connect. So you know that was something that you need, and we need to really work out with your community. Absolutely, I think I think it's important to break down the walls that keep us apart. And I'll tell you a story. I, I used to work at a hotel. And, um, we have two and minutes. Had, so have two minutes, okay. Yes. So I'll try to say this really quick. Uh, it, was, it was people that had um, come to visit from Saudi Arabia, and they were Muslim. And I, you know, I just saw, you know, this is how they're just people. And I wish, I said, I wish everyone could see this, that this is who these people really are. They're just a family here. You know, they may have different c culture, a different culture, but at the end of the day, they're just people just like everybody else, and we're all just people. And if we could just kind of realize that and not put everyone mm -hmm. into the same category, uh, I think, I th and break down those walls and just kind of have a sense of unity here and realize that we're all people, I think the world would be a much more peaceful place. Right, and I think uh, the media needs to stop giving so much attention to all these shooters, these uh, these terrorists, of because we're getting, because that's what they're asking for. They want to be, they want to be for some reason maybe they didn't get, um, you know, when they were kids they didn't, you know, even though they're terrorists they want to become a household name. And I think we need to stop. You know, we should. We should have more Muslim people, homosexuals on the air and talking to each other and not giving so much emphasis to the terrorist. You know, we're, we're doing just the opposite of what we want to accomplish. I absolutely agree. I think we need to bring people together and not push them away from each other. Yes, and, um, we, we, and actually this has been, um, you know, I, I think this has been an enlightenment, this show, because, um, you know, we, we want to help the people and, and we want to also uh, ease up, you know, how we can keep ourselves safe, you know, and I think you brought out some of the things that when kids go to clubs, they need to, you know, they need to look around their surroundings. Yeah. They need to be a more, you know, they need to be more uh, on top of it, you know, instead of just going in and, you know, having the best time in the world. But Gary, I am so glad that you came. I caught you before you went to California. <laughs> and um, you're always a good guest. And when you come back, I always invite you to come to Commons Roundtable. You're always welcome to be our guest here. And the next time you'll be, you know, be, um, you'll have your master's degree. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I want to thank you for being here for us and for our viewers. And um, th this, I think this show can really help people understand what you have been going through and what others have gone through. Thank you very much for being here. And I really appreciate it.